So this tutorial is kind of aimed at the very beginner type of person. Um, and I realized that I should do a tutorial like this because a lot of my tutorials people just go through, they mill through it, and then after they have really no, they don't really have a good concept of what they did. And I kind of realized this after doing all my tutorials. So that's why this one is called Tutorial Zero. And as you can see, I have the editor open here. And I'm this tutorial, I'm just going to explain a lot of stuff. I'm not really going to be making like a tower defense or anything, but just explain it so then people have a concept when they go into my other tutorials. Um, they'll know what they're doing more uh, better, I guess. So I have the editor open, but you can find the editor in your C drive program files in your StarCraft 2 beta folder where you installed it. And there's a little StarCraft 2 editor.exe. And uh, once you actually open it, you get this blank screen. Well, actually, you'll probably get a blank map. Um, it won't be black like this, like mine is. And the reason that mine is blank is because under File Preferences, um, where is it? Uh, startup. Let's see, Startup Documents. I set it to None, so it doesn't uh, doesn't make any crap there. Um, under File Preferences, you'll also be interested in this Battle.net thing. This is where you actually uh, upload to. Um, there's more stuff you can set up here, not really important. Undo Limit. Um, but uh, where is it? Uh, video. Um, you actually want to set this to high at least, I find, because or match game settings if you play on high, because um, things like custom lighting and fog and stuff, that's all, you're not going to notice any of it if you uh, if you don't have this on at least high. So you whatever, you can change whatever and press OK. And so when you want to make a new map, just, just, just to make a new map from nothing, you go File New, and you set this to Map, Document Type, and Dependencies, I usually just leave it on that. Uh, melee and then whatever size you want 256 is huge like um, 64 is pretty small generally 128 by 128 is a good map size for general things but 256 is like if you want to do a massive role-playing game or something um, I'm gonna leave it on 96 by 96 and then you can of course select your uh, texture sets um, I'm just gonna leave it on Belshire and I'm not gonna add any random heights so you create a new map and here you go, you have this um, weird palette here, and I'm just wheeling in and out, and hold down right mouse to move around, and control right mouse goes around, and alt right mouse goes up and down with your camera, so those are good things to know, and if you press middle mouse down, uh, you will get the back to the game view. And so when you're in the terrain editor, there's basically layers that you use to actually do terrain, do like trees, do water, whatever. So you can see under layer, I'm on the doodads layer right now, which is trees and objects. Um, terrain is generally where you start, and you can press T to go to it instead of going through this thing. And from here, generally, I start with cliffs, this button here, and raise cliff, and then set the size a little smaller, and organic is good. And you know, you just paint a bit of cliffs around, whatever, you have your map design in your head. But then you realize, well, I kind of want this to be a grassy area, so you switch to this, the first button here, texture. This thing's good too, and then you can select uh, this one. This one looks like grass, and I generally leave this around here so it's not too harsh. Uh, size, whatever you want, but speed, medium's good, and fall off. I always turn this up because it always just looks better, it looks more smooth. But So you start painting your grass, and you realize it's taking kind of long, so maybe you'll set the speed to fast. You'll just turn increment up and set the size up. So now you can get this whole kind of grassy area. But then it's kind of too repetitive. So you switch to maybe this grass over here and turn this to kind of, I mean, not turn this, paint this to kind of give it some variation. And then you want to add some trees. So you go to layer, uh, doodads. And doodads is like any kind of object in the game that you can't really touch. It's sort of just visual um, prettiness, I guess. So like, um, there's different categories here, and I'm just going to scroll here to find tree bell shear, and I'm just going to place them in here. And I'm kind of far out, so I'm going to press middle mouse down. And uh, so you basically make your map like this, and it looks okay. It's kind of grayish, the lighting. So I'll go over lighting a bit later, but um, you can place more stuff. You can change the category. So after you've done doing that, you probably, like some people might want to place some units. So you go to the units layer. And here you can see you have all your players, and you can actually change player by just pressing keys on the number, on the keyboard actually, number keys. Um, so maybe we're making an RPG and we want to put some hostile uh, zerglings. There's zergling. And we place them around here. 
So that's cool. We got little zerglings on the map. And um, right now, we have basically only one player in the game. So if you actually want to add players and do stuff, you go to map, uh, map info. Actually, well, let's do this first. Um, this is actually to set what your game will look like in, what your map will look like in game. So uh, you might have saved your file as whatever, but that doesn't really matter. What matters is in here, whatever name you specify in here is how your, is how your map's going to appear in the actual, uh, in the actual battle net uh, join game screen. And you want to put your author name and here's the, this area is where your description actually shows up. This one actually never really gets shown, but this is, if you want to put a good description to get people to play your map on battle net, this is where you put it. And you can set some options in here. You can change the bounds. You can modify. If you check modify map bounds, you can actually increase the map size. But I generally don't want to touch this once I've already made a map. And textures, you can, you know, switch a texture to be something else. And loading screen. So if you're making a custom map, you always want to check custom, and you want to check wait for key. So it'll wait for press any key to continue. You can put an image in the background if you want. You can put title, subtitle, help, body, and change where they are. Apply colors. And stuff like that so if you type something here and you click it's on red already apply color you'll see it's red or if you display it as raw you can see the actual tags that make it red so that's good to know that'll apply to triggers and everything so anyways you do that and then you want to add some players so you go to player properties and now we have only player one here so we want to add player two which so we'll make it a user don't need, need to care about anything here unless you wanted a specific race for them so you can add all your players, then you can add you know, a computer player who will be like the allies for your base or something. And generally we don't touch teams. Um, I haven't ever had to for any of my maps. So, And it, people have had bugs with when they published to Battle.net. So anyways, so you do that. You set up your players, whatever. You got your map info set up. But now to actually get your game hostable on Battle.net, um, you need to do something called game variants. And this is kind of how it sets up the lobby. So you add, or you can generate defaults if you're just doing a melee map, like two versus two map or something. But if you want to do your own custom map, you click add, you right click it, and you set it to default. And so that it'll always be checked when the person hosts a new game. And you can name it whatever. Um, generally go to other and other, and you can rename it here. So like we could have tower defense, and maybe the mode is hard. And so when somebody hosts this, uh, it'll be on Tower, say you're making a, t a tower defense um, in the actual Battle.net browser it'll show tower defense and it'll show hard so if you made another one and you set this one to tower defense blah 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 and then make this to medium or whatever then the pers the host can choose these and this one will be selected by default so anyways let's delete that one and then you want to do this too under attributes game mode um, doesn't really matter but uh, game speed, say you want it to always be faster, you click faster, and then you check locked. Now the, the host can't do anything about it. Uh, locked alliances, if you don't want player doing that, you just lock it yes and press locked. Um, rules, don't really care about that. But teams, um, if you want it just one team, lock it so people can't change their teams. You can lock uh, these. I don't generally lock these because people like to add computers and stuff. You can lock the difficulty and handicap so you don't get players changing their handicap. And you can log races and stuff too, so that's all good. And then you press OK, and then when you host on Battle.net, uh, that'll all be set. Um, okay, so you've got that, you've got that all set up. And a cool thing, which um, I've discovered recently, is if you game attribute, what they actually are is, uh, is a way to display stuff to the lobby host or to the players in the lobby. So if I made a custom one called maybe difficulty, and it's for the game, usage always, all players it's only the host can change it and doesn't lock when public isn't hidden so the values maybe it'll have easy medium and that's it a no hard and defaults defaults gonna be easy and it's not gonna be locked so the host can change it so you press OK and now if you go back to game variants um, under attributes hold on oh I didn't save it let's say I had my at variant that I that I pressed OK with so now we see our easy and medium, and you can set this to locked or whatever if you want. So now you can add your own attributes. And the great thing about this is later on I'll show you is that tri in, through triggers you can actually reference uh, what the lobby chose. So say the lobby host chose, and the, and I can't really show this because Battle.net's down, but the lobby host would actually uh, would actually have a drop-down button in their lobby to say difficulty, easy or medium, or whatever you made there.